He's got the uh, just rare magnetic qualities. When I met him for the first time, there's an energy that you feel around Derwin that is different than the rest. Really special leader. Um, you know, he's a great teammate, works hard. His leadership style is a way that just gives us like a spark of energy, you know. We look to him as a, as a leader. He brings the energy every day, and uh, he's a good guy to follow. He just comes ready every day on and off the field. He's ready to learn in the classroom as we learn in the plays and learn in the scheme. You kind of see him every day, and he just kind of rubs off on you. We're, we're definitely thankful that he's on our team. All right, Durham, before we get into it, we got to talk about this get up. Yep. This is my first time seeing you at practice. What's with the hoodie under the jersey with the collar? What's going on there? Well, I threw the hoodie on today. It was a little chilly, get a good sweat on Friday. And then I always wear my collar shirt on business Friday, you know, just ironing out the week. Went all, put the game plan together all week. And now Friday, the final day to kind of iron it out before the game. So I always like to take that business approach. So you iron the shirt. Cause you're ironing out the details yeah, on sure. Business Friday. On Business Friday, yeah. <laughs> is Business Friday your thing or is that a team? No, nah, we kind of came up. Uh, Keenan and some of the other guys, me, Mike, we were early in the season, first game of the season. We kind of came up with it together and uh, we was rocking it. Okay, so it's more of a mentality thing. Mentality, yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of mentality, man, like, what is it that every day when you walk into this building, you want to bring to this organization? I just want to bring that leadership and that mindset that, hey, y'all can trust me and y'all can count on me and that I'm going to be that leader for y'all, not only here, but y'all can trust me outside when I'm not here. So, man, just not just being a rah-rah guy all the time, just but let my teammates know I got their back. He's got a lot of those heart and soul qualities that are um, very hard to find in sports where you can say, man, that's the heart and soul of your program. And it's the type of player he is, but more importantly, the type of leader, the type of person and competitor that he is. And uh, he's just made up of all the right stuff. And that's why, you know, he's one of the rare players in the league. What does it mean to you when Coach Staley and others say that you're the heartbeat of this defense, if not this team? I feel like, first of all, that's a privilege and an honor for them to even think of me like that. And, um, you know, I'm humbled by it. You know, I'm blessed to be in the position I am, and uh, I don't take it lightly. And uh, it just makes me want to work harder and, you know, keep proving them right. Uh, he's a special leader. Uh, he shows up to work every day, uh, works his tail off, and, um, you know, he's the first guy in, last guy to leave. And, um, you know, he's a special player out there on the field, great leader, uh, and a great teammate as well. Let's go back to training camp, man. Mm -hmm. Why was it important to you to still be here while your contract was getting worked out? Uh, because, man, we had new guys that needed to learn the system. And I feel like no matter what, what's going on upstairs, you never let it get in the way of your teammates and the bond that y'all create and the trust y'all trying to build every day. So I didn't want to make my contract situation, you know, affect what I had to do on a daily basis with my brothers, you know, being able for them to trust me, you know, and guys like JC, Khalil, and those guys just trying to get them up to speed. Was there any part of you that thought that it might have been the right move for you to stay away, or it's just how you're wired to be here? Oh, it's just how I'm wired, man. Yeah. I just, I love ball. Everybody know I love ball. My agent, I, I'm, I'm begging him to get back out there, um, but you know, I, I just love ball, man. You talk about how much you love ball. What kind of time commitment, what kind of investment has to go into the, the preparation necessary mm -hmm. for you to be able to play all the different positions you play? Man, it's just a daily, on a daily basis, man, from when we show up here six, seven o'clock in the morning till we leaving four or five. And then when I leave, go home and studying and taking my, taking my mind and my, my body through different paces. Cause like you say, I'm constantly changing positions, whether it's first down, second down, third down, constantly moving. So I got to make sure not only I know one spot, just know everything, know what everybody's doing and just look at it like that. Has the game always come naturally to you that way? Oh yeah. Um, Cause it started back in Pop Warner. Um, my dad coached me early. Uh, he was my first coach when I when I grew up. I, my first position was offensive lineman. Uh, believe it or not, I was, I was on the line because you I was chunky. I, no, I just I didn't know. Like we had all our skill players on the line and stuff. Okay. So <laughs> literally, like I was on the line my first year. I was getting hit. I'm like, man, that don't feel good. Just getting hit. I'm like, I don't like this. And then next year I was running back. You know, so I started scoring touchdowns. It started to feel good. And then after that, I just started rolling. After that, so you literally have sampled every position besides nose guard <laughs> right yeah for sure. probably could do it though if you needed to yeah one, one probably two plays. probably could yeah, rush from yeah. three technique yeah, for something sure. like that yeah um at what point did you realize that you had a gift for this game man it was probably that third year of my pop warner season mm -hmm. um like i said i started off offensive lineman then i went to running back and then that next year it was just like, I, I felt more confident. You know, I was playing both sides of the ball. Yeah. We was winning Super Bowls. And, you know, I just started to hear that mindset. You know, everyone in the community, in the neighborhood telling me, hey, you can make it, you got a chance to stay out of trouble, stay away from this. Yeah. So, you know, I just tried to stay to that, you know? Yeah. 
And when did you start to tap into your, your leadership qualities and become the heartbeat of your teams? I feel like I always had that ever since a baby, like a child. I feel like no matter what, I've, I've never been a follower. And yeah. I've always been a tall guy, so it's, it's always been easy for me to kind of stand out in the room and kind of lead as, you know, you know, you see somebody like kind of a dominant figure, you kind of, mm -hmm. even though if you may not even know him, you may think of something of him. So, you know, just always being that, having that mindset that, hey, I don't care what you're doing, I want to, I know who I am and I know what I stand for. What about uh, when it comes to just how you relate to your teammates? I had uh, somebody that knows you well say he's never seen a more liked player, not just on the team, but throughout yeah. the league. Yeah. Where does that come from? Uh, just being able to not be fake, man. Be real and authentic. I feel like people gravitate towards real, yeah. and they know what's real, and they know when you're bullshitting or you're trying to be a coach pet. So yeah. I just feel like showing up every day with the mindset that, hey, like I don't care how talented I am, how gifted I am, I'm gonna show up, I'm gonna work, and you know, you know what I'm gonna bring to the table. So I, I feel like, and then just treating everybody with respect, man. Yeah. Like knowing your teammates, everybody different. Everybody like to be talked to different. You may, you may want, I have, may have to talk to you different than I have to talk to him. So yeah. just understanding my teammates, understanding the people around me, I feel like that's what helped me too. Everyone's eyes are on Derwin James because they believe in him. They know who he is uh, in the weight room, in the meeting room, off the field, on the field, uh, win, lose, or draw. And it's that type of consistency uh, of excellence that I think um, draws everyone to him. Derwin, what drives you, man? What motivates motivates you to do what you do every day? I feel like just seeing my son, his face, being able to count on me, and you know, and watching my mom work so hard, two jobs growing up, and just seeing my family, you know, I, I feel like that's what really drove me to the person I am, you know, because there's a lot of people always out, out there trying to find that drive and what's your why and why you do this. I just really think, man, even before I had my son, just being able to love ball and the person who I am, really. Mm -hmm. And what did the record-breaking contract mean to you? It mean everything. It mean all the sacrifices. And it meant all the days that I failed. Like, like it's crazy how it sounds. Like, all the days that I failed, like, that it, when I didn't succeed how I want to, when I didn't practice how I want to, when I, didn't, when I got injured, when I went through adversity, I feel like everything just shaped me to who I am and paid off, like, that 1% of just getting to that point. It just really stamped that, hey, man, you threw it all. It was darkness, but you, you made it through it. What is failure to you? How do you define failure? I define failure, I can see failure in different ways because I feel like everything that I consider failing, I feel like I've learned a lesson through mm -hmm. it. So I feel like when I when I know I can play, when I can know, when I can do this, and then bomb, non contact injury or something, I feel like I failed. I feel like I let my teammates down. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm not available for y'all. That's how I feel like I failed. But body-wise and football mind and as a person, I didn't fail. I feel like I got better, I got stronger, gotcha. you know. I failed my teammates by not being available for the season for them. That's how I feel like I feel. Yeah. You know what I mean? How are you uh, working toward being an even better teammate? Like, what's that process for you? Just continue to get better every day. And um, not being able to, to just know my job, but impact people now, where when, when I'm playing, they playing at the same level I'm playing at, no matter who they is, no matter what talent they have. But hey, man, we out here together. You feel like you just as big as me. So that's what I'm trying to get to. If I can tap into that, then that's, that's going to help the team too. You know why I'm smiling? Because I've heard that you kind of sort of nice on the sticks. Oh, yeah, I played it mad in huh? you, you What you were describing, help me out, because I, I ain't been on it in a couple of mm -hmm. years. They got this effect on Madden yeah. where if you get it, your whole team. Everybody, X Factor effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's you. That's, that's what I need. Yeah, I need that, <laughs> okay. man. Yeah. Everybody yeah. got that bounce. Everybody got that swag yeah. for them. You know, that's that's what I want to bring energy. I want to bring life. I want to bring all that to the team, to the defense. His energy, man. He's always flying around. Uh, like I said, he's just a good guy to follow, man. And he's a football player, man. At the end of the day, he's a he's a baller. He knows how to make plays, and that's what that's what that's what kind of leaders you want. Talk about that Travis Kelsey play, man, early in the year. That's still one of the highlights of the year where you, uh, where you picked him up. Uh, oh, man, I just – I didn't want him to score. Um, I, I seen he was running uh, open. Mahomes was scrambling. Yeah. And I knew the goal line was, like, right behind me. So I'm like, I can't give ground. He's going to try to power me through the end zone. I, that's going to look bad. So I, it's like I got to stand my ground. And, you know, I connected good. And once I felt him, I kind of lifted and just tried to drop him. But then, but then he said you asked him if he was all right. Yeah, I did. So even though you, like – a hunter on the field, you still got time to be a nice guy. Yeah, I feel like I feel like because now look at it. If I if I hit you and I talk trash to you, mm -hmm. it's gonna motivate you. You're gonna get excited. You're gonna you, you ready to go. But if I hit you, I knock you out or whatever, and I'm like, yo, all right, it, it kind of mess with your head even more, right? 
That's, that's a good point. You know what I mean? Because yeah, it's nothing to you. It, ain't nothing to it rocked me. my world, but it's nothing to you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. What about your long-term goals, man? What are they? Man, I want that gold jacket one day, man. To be able to have that gold jacket, to hold that Lombardi up for my teammate. That's my long-term goal. And to be able to say I did it the right way. You know, the little kids looking back on it, like, hey, man, that's a role model. That's a person I can look up to. Like, he did it the right way. Like, yeah. it wasn't always perfect. Like, he, he made it work through adversity. He made it, it, he did it the right way. Given the level that you're performing at now, how much more room do you have to grow given how much time you've missed the injury? I, I, I feel like I ain't played my best football yet. I feel like I, I'm starting to get better and better. Like, this this truly my my second season, my, my second season in the system, you know, not being able, last year was my first year in this system. So now it's my second year in this system. So just getting used to it and getting used to playing football, getting my body back used to hitting and stuff. So I feel like I ain't even played my best football yet. It's like a overly loud confidence, you know, like that's how he, he comes across when he plays. That's how he comes across when he talks. And that confidence is like contagious. So guys like me, guys around him, who's maybe a little bit more quieter, who have their own way of doing things, he brings off confidence that instills into everyone else. Derwin, what are some of your passions away from football? Man, I love music. I love music a lot. Yeah. I'm a big Madden EA guy. Yeah. I'm in the clothes. I love clothes. And I, I could tell. Yeah, I love clothes and fashion, <laughs> stuff like that. And really just, I'm a family man too. I love spending time with my family. What position did you enjoy playing most or what role did you enjoy playing most? I just love playing football, man. Like literally, I can't just pinpoint where I like, hey, I like being close to the line. I like being deep. No, it's literally, I like being out there playing. Man. Yeah. Is there a moment where you felt like as a, as a player, the light bulb went off for you? As a player? I feel like I always had that light bulb. Like I always, when I step on the field, I feel like I'm the best player. Like no matter whether it's been Pop Warner, whether it's been high school, college, NFL, like no, I'm just not cocky. I just like confident in myself to know who I am and know what God blessed me with. So I always had that mentality. What about as a person? Was there a point as a, as a young man where you, where you started to really get it? Uh, I say high school, well, middle school really for me because Early in elementary, I was getting in trouble and stuff, uh, hanging with the wrong people. And then about my fifth, sixth grade, my mom moved me away to a new neighborhood where I didn't know anyone and um, had to make new friends. And um, it kind of clicked for me, you know, like I started to make good grades now. I started, you know, not getting in trouble. So I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. Cause like, I didn't think it was cool like to make good grades at first when I was younger. Like my friends, we wanted to make people laugh and stuff. Like that's what it was yeah. about. But, when I first got that, when I when I made A's and B's for the first time, like man, that kind of feel good. Like, so I wanted to do it again, and I started chasing that every year, and like started to get straight A's, and then from there I just got an offer for Florida State, you know, and it just took me from there. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.